let's talk about optimization and learn how to reduce draw calls. So what is a draw call? When we need to make an object appear on screen, we need to make an API call to the graphics card to draw said object. Now, draw calls aren't a one-to-one -one relationship with an object. Instead, draw calls will be based on how many meshes an object has times the number of materials that object also has. If we have an object, say, has two meshes and three materials, then we have to make six draw calls per instance of that object. When we have hundreds of instances with multiple meshes per instance and multiple materials, you can see how draw calls can get out of hand quick. So let's see how we can reduce them. And starting off, let's find out what are good metrics for draw calls. And Meta provides metrics to go by. A range of 80 to 600 is the target depending on if the scene is busy, medium, or light. What does busy, medium, or light mean? Well, that's based on what is all going on in the scene. So busy would be something like a multiplayer FPS, medium would be a single player FPS, and then a light simulation would be something like an escape room or some puzzle games. So now that we have our metrics, let's start off by visualizing the problem. And we can actually do that with something called the frame debugger. So if we come up to window, go to analysis, and come down to frame debugger, you can actually see here, if we hit click enable, we can walk through all the draw calls that are going on throughout the scene. And I'm going to expand these out really quick. And this is the frame debugger. If I start off here at the top, I can actually go down case by case and it will show how things are drawn out throughout the scene. And if we look at the top, you can see this is the amount of draw calls we are making right here, and we can zoom right through it. And you'll notice, you know, there are a lot of draw calls for every single mesh because we haven't optimized anything. And we can also go up here and see that shadows too, you know, we might want to consider cutting them out because already, as soon as we get to the shadow render map, it's already bumped it up 140 draw calls. And so there's some things to optimize here, and well, let's optimize them. To kick things off, one thing I like to do, especially if I'm doing a project for, let's say, game jams or some kind of smaller prototyping, is just getting rid of shadows. You'll see we're at 242 draw calls already. So let's see what happens if I get rid of the shadows. And you do that by going to Edit, Project Settings, and then you go down to Quality, scroll down here, and here's Shadows. And we can disable them. And you'll see it already chopped it down to 100 draw calls now just by getting rid of the shadows. So if it's not vital to your project, you might want to consider dropping the shadows altogether. And I'm going to go over how we can, you know, bake lighting later in a lighting optimization video and get those shadows back. But I'm going to leave that for a different video. So I'm going to X out of these for now and let's move on to our next thing, which is going to be static batching. And so what static batching is, is, well, as the name implies, we're using static objects, so we don't intend for them to move and we are going to be batching them into a single draw call. And Unity does this by taking all the static objects and making them into a single mesh. And then it will just send it as a single draw call for a single mesh. So to accomplish this, first I want to point out that we should probably visualize this again. And so I'm going to hit stats in the game window. And you can see here that it says batches right here. And that's the same as draw calls in Unity. And one thing I really want to point out is if we highlight things, you'll notice that the batch number goes up because, well, it's rendering that too. So just keep that in mind. Don't freak out if things are jumping for some reason. It's because you're probably highlighting them. So to activate static batching, all we have to do is go to edit, project settings, and then player. Once we've gone to player, just make sure you're on the PC tab here. And we're going to scroll down and you're going to see we have static batching and dynamic batching. And I'll talk about dynamic batching in a moment. But for now, static batching. Just going to click it. And now we're ready to do some static batching. And it doesn't get much easier than this. All we have to do is select objects that we want to be static and to be statically batched. So I already have a bunch here. And to make it easier, I grouped it all together under this general parent object. And all you have to do is come up to this top square, hit static, say yes for all the children. And you'll see that now all the children are marked as static and they should statically batch. So let's see what it does. Uh, if we hit the play button, Wow, you'll notice that it chopped those down to 11 batches, whereas before it was 
sitting at about around 100, I believe. And that is static batching, which is nice, but sometimes we want our objects to move. So how do we batch those draw calls? And that's where dynamic batching comes in. You see, I already have some objects set up here, so we'll get rid of these and I will activate these and you'll see that it is just a bunch of squares. And if I press play, they will dance around a little bit. And nothing too crazy, but here's some movement and yeah, let's see if we can batch these. Now, in order to dynamically batch things, they need to have very specific things. It needs to only be made up of 300 vertices per object since that's why these are just simple squares. They have to have the same material as other objects. So as you see here, the material is the same on all of these and they have to have the exact same scale as the other objects as well. And if they hit those marks, then they might be viable for dynamic batching. I'm gonna press play and see how many batches this is producing and see if we can chop it down a bit. And starting up the scene, you'll see, yeah, it's bouncing around 38. And to activate dynamic batching, again, we go to edit project settings and player, and it's gonna be right next to static batching. You just check it. And the nice thing is we don't even have to check a box like we did with static batching. Unity will actually determine whether or not objects are going to be worth dynamic batching and it'll do it for us. So let's start up the scene and see what we have. And already you can see we went from what was that 30 down to 11. That's not bad. And our objects are moving. So cool. Now, similar to dynamic batching, GPU instancing has its own characteristics that it needs to qualify for. Objects have to have the same mesh and they also have to have the same material. And if they have those two components, then we can use GPU instancing. And essentially what GPU instancing does is it takes all the mesh and materials that have the commonalities and it will combine them and it will just make a list of vertices and their transforms and it just sends it all in one single draw call. And kind of similar to static batching, what you do is you go here and you go down to the material that you want to do GPU instancing and you just click enable GPU instancing. And if we look at all these other ones, all of it uses the same material. These are all the same box and to make sure it's working, I'm going to turn off dynamic batching. And if remember, without dynamic batching, these were pulling in about a 30 batches here. Let's see what it's doing with the GPU instancing now. And there we have it, the GPU instancing is working and you can see that it is pretty similar to dynamic batching, but the nice things about it is it's not putting a workload on the CPU and also it's not limited to such small amount of vertices for drawing. And yeah, let's see what happens if I also add in the static batching. And remember before we were sitting somewhere around, what, 100 before we did static batching and dynamic or sorry, GPU instancing now. And yeah, let's press play and see what we have. I mean, look at that. We went from 100 down to 12 to 13 draw calls. And yeah, I don't know what you consider great improvement, but for me, I think that is substantial. Well, I hope you found this useful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.